Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 13 in Leipzig, Germany, and we're here at the Ace Tech booth. I'm here with Steve Branton from Ace Tech. Steve, now you guys are all about uh, liquid cooling, are you not? Correct. So Hot we, water liquid cooling. Well, outer, okay, so, so what are we looking at here? So this is um, a hot water liquid cooling system that does direct-to-chip liquid cooling. This is actually our first commercial uh, development with Cray. This is the cooling system that goes in the CS300LC. Um, it uh, runs water in at 40 degrees C, which allows you to do chillerless cooling. Um, that's important because chillers use up most of the energy in a traditional uh, cooling system in a data center. In addition, we're able to bring the water out at 58C, which is warm enough to be able to do domestic water heating, building heating, and uh, even uh, absorption type chilling. So lower cost of cooling on the, on the way in, and the ability to use all the energy that you're using to run your system, able to recover that in waste heat recovery. Now this is the old uh, APRO technology, is it not that Cray acquired? Correct. This is the APRO uh, technology that Cray acquired. Okay. Okay. So, so what else do you have here today? So let's talk just real quickly about this. So this is a rack extension that fits on the back of the rack. Okay. It's connected via tubes to the, sy to the system here, uh, the nodes inside. And if we come around this way. And each node has a little liquid cooler inside of it that cools the CPUs. And then that connects back to the rack via these two connection oh, tubes. So Steve, what are we looking at here? So this is the piece that goes inside the server node itself. We have the quick connects back here. Hot water comes in here to the first pump. And on the bottom of the pump is a CPU cooler rotates through the pump and out to a memory cooler into a second pump and out through the second memory cooler. Now it's important that the pumps are in series. Each pump is strong enough to drive the entire system. So you have redundant, a redundant pumping system. And from here it goes out to the tubes and to the rack CDU. So these connectors are inside and connect to these connectors here, which transfers the liquid to and from this rack CDU unit. So there's a cold water distribution and a hot water distribution, cold water being 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then from here, these two manifolds distribute the water into this liquid to liquid heat exchanger where the, the heat is exchanged between the server liquid and the facility's liquid. Uh, the water doesn't change, so the, the water running in the server side doesn't mix with facilities liquid. Okay. And then, um, this is where I bring the water in at 104 degrees Fahrenheit and out at 138 degrees Fahrenheit. And that, this whole structure is then integrated into the rack over here. All right, so, so David, we were here to take a, a, a deeper look at the Ace Tech technology, and a lot of partners are starting to sign up and use this in, in their systems. Can you show us some of that? Yeah, it's exactly what's been happening. We've seen a strong adoption of our systems. And here, I want to show you some of our OEM partners. Uh, Cisco and C220 system, the, we have a system here with a cool, cooling loop that has both CPU cooling and memory cooling similar to what we Steve just showed you on the HP system. Here's a system from Megware, European Met partner, and this is a 4P system where you have the uh, cooling distribution across the four processors. We have two systems next to each other uh, from Fujitsu. This is a 2P system here and a 4P system there. And both of these systems are two of Fujitsu's high-running products, and they were very happy for us to show them at the show here today. So last time I did a video with Ace Tech at SC, they showed me the software that comes with it. It was very innovative. Do you supply this to the partners as well? We do. In fact, we have an in-depth monitoring system that we've developed that helps us uh, 
profile our system and helps our customers understand exactly what ha is happening within the both facility, uh, within the rack level, and within the node level. And so this monitoring system is actually connected to our, our server rack in San Jose, which is a 96 node cluster. And this shows you some of the things that we're monitoring at a high level, facilities temperature in, facilities temperature out. It's about a 70 degree delta between those. Liquid temperature in at 30 degrees and server liquid temperature out at 41 degrees C. And there's 10 to 12 uh, degree de delta there. And then some of the also pressures and the water flow in the system. Okay, so, so that's, that's the x86 kind of the server piece. What about GPUs? They're starting to use those uh, with liquid cooling, are they not? Yes, in fact, there's a very big uh, emphasis on GPU here at the show. Where you see quite a bit of the, the manufacturers offering those. Yeah. We have two solutions here on display, although we do others. Uh, this is the NVIDIA Tesla K20. It's a system that we've actually developing uh, for one of our OEM partners, Cray, which we talked about earlier in the video as well as the uh, Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor liquid cooler, which um, is very much featured on the show today in many of the booths. All right, so Steve, you know, we talked about this system at SC, but now we've got the, the uh, case so we can see inside. Well, what's going on here? So this is our in-server air conditioner ISIP version of our uh, cooler. It still uses a direct-to-chip liquid cooling to cool the CPUs, but prior to cool in the CPUs, we bring the water into this liquid air heat exchanger, and that cools the air within the server. So we've modified the airflow. Normally the airflow was all this direction. In this server, this half is coming this way, and then we have a duct here that channels the air back around and brings it this way, where again we cool the air before it goes into the disk drives and down to cool the power supply. So with this solution, we have a rotating air pattern, and the air is not exchanged at all with the data center, which means this can be deployed in hostile environments. And because we're capturing the air that's uh, from the power supply and the disk drives, the heat from that into air, and then into liquid, we're able to take about 95% of the heat generated by the server out of the data center and liquid. 